Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ryan or Darwin Design here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to create recruiting graphics. Um, I did a bunch of these whenever I was working with Houston. Basically, it's just, you know, work. Usually, they'll be with a team or a college or something like that. Um, and they'll be sent out to like, for example, mine were like JUCO or like high school. Uh, basically, just players you're trying to entice to come to your program. So um, I did a bunch of these while I was working with Houston. This is one of my favorite ones I came up with. So I'll be breaking this one itself down. And then I have a few more examples and I'll just kind of talk through our creative process on how I go about doing them. But um, I would start each one off with a phrase. So like, for example, for this one, I had the missing piece. So I'd come up with that phrase before I actually start working on the design itself. And then I'd base the design around that phrase, if that makes sense. So um, I'll start off just kind of breaking this down a little bit. So I pulled actually just a regular, uh, it was a just Houston map. I pulled it off of Google, changed the colors a little bit, and um, just threw a puzzle texture over the top like that. And then just add a little gradient so the player would be masked or player would blend a little bit better. Um, did a little bit of uh, skinning with the player, just some topaz. I talk about that all the time. Uh, if you want to, know any more thing about that you can check out past videos uh selective color to get the colors i want right here you can kind of tweak them to change the appearance on how things show up i darkened the visor a little bit because i want it to be more of a silhouette since it's recruiting you don't want them to have like a player identity so kind of if there was numbers usually i'd mask out the numbers on the jerseys things like that you just kind of want it to be a houston football player you don't want it to be like a specific person if that makes sense um, I added some darks and lights in with some curves, which are right here. Lower the bar, go dark, up it, it'll go uh, lighter. And then you could use a layer mask here to kind of brush in how you want it to, to show up. So, uh, and then I got a tan color here just to put around the edges um, and kind of help it blend in with that background a little bit, that kind of brownish puzzle uh, that we got going on in the back. So that's basically for the mask and for the overlay, pretty simple too. I'll start off with the puzzle pieces. These are just really just for depth. Uh, so it really just was a regular puzzle piece like this. I just found off Google, cut it out, um, put it on, put it on, uh, or blurred it rather. I just motion blur, filter, blur, motion blur. Um, put some behind them and then did the similar thing that I did with the mask with curves. And then I got some regular, uh, just black and white layers to kind of get some lighting in there and help them blend a little bit better. So I put some smaller ones here, just kind of spread them throughout. Um, same thing on all of these, just kind of blurred them, did some some basic lighting. And then I threw a tan color on them uh, to help match that background in that kind of orange brownish vibe as well. Uh, threw a gradient on there to kind of help it all blend in. And then color correction to kind of make it pop. So for the CC, uh, if you've watched any videos recently, you know what this is. Uh, I'm going to start off with camera raw usually, and then I'll go into the camera raw presets. So filter, camera raw filter. And then once you're here, you can kind of tweak the exposure, the highlights, contrast, uh, all these I would play with and get uh, something that you like and what works for your picture itself. So I'd usually start with that layer. And then once I get some I like, you can just name it camera raw and lessen the opacity and fill and boom. Now I can make a CC layer and copy both of these and merge them. And then you go back to filter, camera raw filter. And then right here on your sidebar in the uh, camera raw, you can see presets here. And Photoshop has a ton, of different, ton of different presets that you can look at. So for this one, for example, warm shadows, that's under here, I think. Yeah, warm shadows, cool light, uh, FT7 and PDO1 are up here. So I just kind of go through all these and look to see what I can pull and Photoshop just keeps adding a bunch more in every update. Like even now they have one that's like, it kind of skins it for you, like adaptive. And this is really cool. Actually, if you get the newer version, um, it's like it, it kind of uses a computer to, to cut out like the subject and then you can get different effects on it and it only applies to the subject. So Photoshop's getting good with the AI. Like for example, look, like I could put that on pop, for example, and you can see it, it basically is like its own skin. So yeah, super clutch. Uh, I really like that. So um, I just explore that preset section. This is are the ones that I did. So you can see I get uh, different ones, lower the opacity and fill on them and then kind of play with blend modes to pull different things. 
um this one's a little bit saturated maybe turn that down but add a little bit of blur and grain so to do that i uh with the blur or with the grain rather i'll copy all my layers merge them and go to filter noise add noise and then gaji monochromatic you can kind of just put a little bit in there like five is good in my opinion um but it's all personal preference so you can lower the opacity on it and then once you get that you can add some blur in there just same thing merge it all and filter blur gaijin blur and you can see i was very you can see just by looking at the layer mask i just kind of brushed it in just a little bit to create some more depth like so just very gently around the edges and on the puzzle pieces just to create a little bit of depth um and I, I like the way that looks so and then you can add uh vibrance and selective color like i did here um hindsight i would turn this down a little bit it's a little too much vibrance maybe turn that down a bad too or a tad too uh but these are all in your adjustment panel here so just play with those reds yellows you can kind of get them to pop the uh, way you want to um, and have colors show up the way you want them to so that's that vibrance right here and you can turn it up turn it down to get the uh the colors and tones the way you want them as well that's basically it for cc um i'll delete that layer and then just text i kept it pretty simple um just got a simple font and i put the puzzle texture back over it so i went back here and then put on a clipping mask so right click clipping mask and we put it over that one um and then it was on normal and i could just lower the opacity on that just to kind of tie back in that puzzle theme instead of leaving it just like regular white kind of blends in a little bit better um and i like the way that looks so uh, basically what a clipping mask does is it also makes it just so it only shows up on what it's clipped to so this since this layer is just clipped to the text it's only going to show up on the text like for example if i remove the the clipping mask you can see it shows up on the whole design so that's kind of what a clipping mask does um there's some more text up here some subtle ones and then same thing here with this first and last text just through a little bit of uh the puzzle texture over the top to help it blend in a little bit and that's that watermarks and you're good so that's kind of just a basic breakdown of how i did this one uh, and then i have a few more references here i wanted to walk you all through so for example uh for the city was one of our phrases as i mentioned um earlier i want to pick a motto or a phrase or whatever to kind of base the design around so whenever i was first assigned the work i, I picked maybe five six seven whatever phrases um and just kind of jotted those down and then i kind of based the design around those words so uh for the city i want to involve the city obviously so i got downtown houston in the back unleash your inner cougar uh, i kind of felt more like aggressive on this one so i got chains and stuff um and kind of just kind of like a more mean type vibe uh this one is who's next which doesn't really correlate to uh <laughs> to the design itself but i just thought it looked cool uh with the tvs and stuff like that in the back prepare for takeoff uh houston ties in with rockets nasa stuff like that so i liked the, the um involving like the rocket ship taking off and stuff like that so prepare for takeoff this one i actually really liked how it turned out and one of my favorites here rodeo travis scott album cover um something else i like to do is tie in like city cultures so, like houston's like a super cultural city so there's so much going on whether it's artists whether it's whatever right there's so much that that is involved in the city so if you're working for example with a team or a college that has like a ton of culture um i would involve that as well because you're trying to sell the people on the on the college like the recruits you're sending it out to so um what really matters is just making dope work and then tying in stuff to cities like a plus so uh houston i had a bunch of options but i like rodeo so i went with that but um yeah it's just a few examples and um a little bit of a breakdown as to how i did this one if you have any questions i'd love to answer them so comment them down below uh like comment subscribe i'm sorry for the inactivity a little bit i'm gonna try and pick it up um but yeah i appreciate all your support man y'all are awesome uh you can hit me on my socials those are always in the description 
Uh, I'll get back to you there when I can. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, catch you all in the next one. Peace out.